Hello and welcome to another Kangaroo English Daily Digest. My name is Christian and today is Tuesday, best day of the week. Um, today I'm going to attempt something kind of adventurous. <laughs> because um, I've only got 10 minutes and there's a lot of things I want to talk about, but basically I'm going to try to tell the story of the relationship between today's word of the day, chock block and this weird looking tuba, which is called a Jerusalem artichoke. <laughs> okay, so um, first let's, let's read another passage from this, uh, this little book here, my, my book which I'm currently obsessed with. And it, it answers the question in the book, it answers the question about who decides what, who decides what's correct and not correct, what's not correct in language. Okay, so listen to this. Lexicographers, philologists, grammarians, and schoolmasters may try to introduce elements of stability in vocabulary or construction, to fix meanings, to set up standards of purity and correctness, to discourage hybrids or alien borrowings or slang, to ventilate their pet theories or fads, but in the long run, it is popular acceptance that decides. Popular acceptance. And that's because this, this talks, what I'm talking about today, answers a question of kind of where does language come from? And how do we end up with all these words? Where do words come from? And I've been talking a little bit about that, you know, recently. So we actually need to start our story with something called a mondegreen. Okay, so a mondegreen is basically when you, you hear a word or a phrase and it could be from another language or it could be from, from, from the same language and you think you're hearing something different. So this is especially common in music. So for a famous example is the Jimi Hendrix song where he sings, excuse me while I kiss the sky, boom, 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 boom. You, you know that song, right? Excuse me while I kiss the sky. Okay, it's like a metaphor for maybe being high on drugs, I don't know. But a lot of people think that he's saying, excuse me while I kiss this guy. <laughs> Well, excuse me while I kiss this guy. Right, okay, so, so it, it's like a funny but common misinterpretation. And, and in fact, it created these conspiracy theories that maybe Jimi Hendrix was secretly gay. Ooh. Okay, so that's an example of a mondegreen. Now, there's another similar type of thing called an eggcorn. An eggcorn. Now, an eggcorn is where you hear something different but the meanings are kind of related, okay? Let me give you some examples. So, um, if you're in, a, uh, in an argument with somebody, you're in an argument with somebody, and, um, and, and uh, you, <laughs> imagine you said, well, if, um, if Jimi Hendrix was here, he would tell you that you're wrong. And you say, well, that is a mute point. Mute point. Now, probably if you've got a remote control at home on your television, you know the, the, um, the button, which is mute. Mute means to stop the sound, right? To stop the sound. And it's also the word we use to describe people who can't speak. People who can't speak are called mutes, right? So... It makes sense, it's logical to say, well, that's a mute point. It's a point that has no voice because Jimi Hendrix can't tell you that because he's dead, right? Mute point. But actually, the real origin of the word, the real phrase is moot point. M-O-O-T, a moot point. And moot means inconsequential, unimportant, irrelevant. So... What we've done is we've taken this word moot, which is not very common in English, and we've substituted it for a word which sounds basically the same, which is a homophone, sounds the same, has a really similar meaning, and makes sense. It's a, a mute point, a moot point, they both make sense. And this, this process 
creates egg corns. And this process gives us lots of different um, phrases and words in language. One of my favorites is um, if you want to say that that life can be harsh and life can be unfair and life is difficult, you can say that it's a dog eat dog world. Basically, top dog eats the, 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 the lower dog, right? You know, the top dog eats the, the weaker dogs. You know, dog fighting, it's like a vicious, you, can, you know, you get this idea of vicious, but <laughs> some, a lot of people think that it's the adjective, they think it's, it's a doggy dog world. <laughs> which, which kind of, to them, you know, it, it has a kind of sense, because again, it's related to dogs, you know, maybe dogs are kind of, I mean, it sounds cute, it's a doggy dog world, but that's a really common misinterpretation. And, and another thing that can happen, and this is, this is another interesting part of the process, is that you have two words together and you misinterpret the space in the words. Now, a very um, famous example is the word in English, orange. If you look at almost all of the other languages in Europe, the word starts with an N. Like, for example, in, sp in Spanish, it's naranja, okay? So it's n -n -n -n. It comes from the Persian, uh, which started with an L. But anyway, it started with a consonant, okay? But you think in English, if we have a word that starts with a consonant, we use the article a. A, norange. A, norange. A. But what happened was... People, you know, when you're speaking, the words come together and they misinterpreted the space and they thought it was an orange. You see? You see how that happened? So then the orange lost its N. So through this process, words can appear that just seem bizarre. And this is where we move to our word of the day, chock -a block Now, chock -a block means something which is completely full. Like you could say, man, I went to the restaurant and it was chock-a-block. It was chock-a-block, it's an adjective, right? Um, which means that, yeah, it was just completely full of people. This is the Spanish hand gesture for full. <laughs> completely full of people, there was no room for, for anybody, it was chock-a-block. Um, or, yeah, you can say, you know, my, my head is chock-a-block with ideas. Or even you can double, you can say chock block full of ideas, which is like doubling the meaning, right? Now, this, this, this word, this word came from two elements, chock and block, okay? So a block is a piece of wood, a piece of wood used on boats, you know, where you have the pulleys, you know, you pull it and it's like a block with, yeah, okay, that's the block. And chock... Chalk meant full because chalk is choke. And if something is choking, it's full. Choking. Choke. Choke is full. And choke is this kind of, you know, the neck. Okay. And that brings us, whoo, I haven't got long now. Okay. That brings us to, to this. God damn it. <laughs> that brings us this. This is an artichoke. An artichoke. An artichoke, uh, it, I have a note here, it actually came from, probably from the Arabic, al-hursafa, which is the root harshaf, which means fish scales. Because if you look at it, it kind of looks a bit like fish scales. Artichoke. And then it came into Spanish, alcachofa, and then it came into Italian, which was archicioffi, archicioffi, artichoke. So the English wanted to add something that sounded familiar. Choke, choke, and it kind of looks like a neck, right? Now here's the weird thing. This is called a Jerusalem artichoke. Because in Italian, because this is actually from the sunflower plant, the girasole, girasole Jerusalem. Can you believe it? It's called a Jerusalem artichoke because of girasoles and choking and all of the stuff. And I told the whole story in 10 minutes and I'm really happy and I hope you enjoyed today's Daily Digest and I'll see you in class.